I just wanted to come on here real quick and, you know, give a, a full video of my testimony since people be asking, yo, when can we get a testimony from Lucky? When can we hear your testimony? How you found Christ? How you came to God? And I also wanted to touch on uh, why I don't change my name from Lucky Luciano or why I still go by Lucky Luciano as the rapper. To answer that question is simple is because if people just hear my new music, someone driving in the car and someone hops in and they hear uh, a song my new music but they don't know that it's lucky luciano they just know it as my new name that i'm going by they may not put two and two together and say hey this is lucky luciano from back in the day you know what i'm saying the one that used to rap with dope house the one that was you know wilding out all the time so that's why i still go by lucky luciano to let you know what god can do when you let go and let god and you surrender and you repent and you ask god to pour fresh new anointing over you and you allow god to work through you you can see what god can do you can see the transformation that could happen with god all things are possible that's why i still go by lucky luciano to remind everybody where i came from and who i used to be i know it wasn't luck i know i ain't got no luck i used to think i was lucky but i got the anointing of God was on my life the whole time. My whole life, I had favor from God and I didn't know it. You know what I'm saying? I was blind to the fact that God had his hand on my life the whole time. He had given me favor and I thought it was luck. That's why I used to go by Lucky ever since a kid. You know what I'm saying? So that's the reason why I still go by Lucky Luciano. I know it's not luck. I have been blessed and I have been shown a lot of, lot of favor over my life. A lot of people that be in, in the comments trying to figure out if I'm a real Christian or not, if I'm a, you know what I'm saying, if I'm just doing this for money or they trying to figure it out. But while they on the sideline trying to figure it out, I'm out here in the field winning souls. You know, I'm actually out here being the hands and feet of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? I'm out here really, really discipling the youngsters. I'm really, really discipling my friends and sending them scriptures and pouring into them and really trying to bring them and build up the body of Christ. I've always had haters. I've been having haters since I was 13 years old. So a little internet comment ain't gonna phase me. You know what I'm saying? I just wanna, I just wanted to touch on that subject before I get into the full testimony. So ever since a young age, teenage years, I started um, smoking and drinking, and you know, just being running wild in the streets at a very young age, 13, 14 years old. I was already out there in the streets, acting bad. You know what I'm saying? Kicked out of school. Um, in going to juvenile 13 years old getting arrested 14 15 16 just just wilding out you know what i'm saying then by the time i turned 18 years old is when i met south park Mexican and dope house records and they took me on the road so i was already you know used to sipping syrup and smoking and popping the pills and all that mind you the spm and baby bash and grim and everybody that was around they were a lot older than me not a lot they were about 10 years older than me you know what i'm saying they were about 10 years older than me so they were a little bit more mature than me so when we would go out of town to these events these shows and concerts and parties and after parties vip section you know they kind of knew more or less how to um take in all of that you know what i mean they knew they were already grown men i was still a kid you know what i'm saying so what i did was i indulged in all the free drinks the Every, you know, the, the ballers and the drug dealers in those cities would want to hang around us and they would want to buy everybody's drinks and supply all the party favors. And me being a youngster and a young, young minded kid, you know what I'm saying? Just indulged in everything. I would indulge in all the women, all the money, all the, the alcohol, the drugs, you, you know, you name it, I did it. You know what I'm saying? So as time went on and on and on from 18 to 19 to 20, 21, 23, 20, by the time I'm 23, 24 years old, you know, it wasn't even really about the music no more. It was just about me partying and wanting to party every weekend, mess with girls and just just wild out. You know what I'm saying? And then I started um, I started realizing I had a problem probably around when I was in my mid 20s. You know what I'm saying? When when I started realizing, you know, they stopped wanting me to come around to the concert, stop stop getting invited to the parties. The after parties, the concerts, they didn't really want Lucky around because he was going wild out and they didn't know what I was going to do. Or I was the one that was getting kicked out of the club or, you know, just just acting a fool, you know, just just being very uh, belligerent, a belligerent drunk, you know, just like, hey, I'm Lucky Luciano. You don't know who I am. Just all that. You know what I'm saying? Wilding out.
and then um, I started wrecking my cars, man. I would get, I would get, you know, money here and there from, you know, uh, doing shows or putting out CDs or, uh, you know, getting little advances here and there from different record companies or distributors that would give me advances for uh, m music and stuff. So I would have money, but then I would just blow it in the club. I would get cars and I'd wreck my car. I remember one time I. I had totaled a vehicle, and then I got a rental car, and then I went and wrecked the rental car. I ended up uh, going to jail for a DWI, and when I was sitting in the jail, by this time I had two sons. I had Elijah and Kingston, you know, and by this time, uh, I realized that I needed to get my act together, and I was like, man, I need to clean my life up. I need to, I need to, you know, get off this alcohol, stop partying all the time and really just focus on my business, my music career. I got an opportunity in front of me that most people that don't have, you know what I'm saying? So I got out, I was on probation for a year and they had me going to AA. I started going to AA meetings and that, when you're in AA, the 12 step program, you have a sponsor and the sponsor's job is to basically read the AA book and uh, they, they pray, they teach you how to pray. And in AA, they don't teach you about Christianity or Jesus. It's more like you're praying to a higher power. So, but that's where I learned how to pray. Like they would literally get, tell you to get on your knees and pray. And then you got to do a thing called uh, self-inventory where you, you write down a bunch of stuff about, about yourself that you're holding on to, things that uh, people may have hurt you or things that you just childhood stuff that you've been carrying along and try to figure out why it is that you're indulging in these drugs and alcohol. And you write it all down, you make a list, you crumble it up, throw it away, and you start making amends with people that you have hurt. Basically, you're, you're going and asking for forgiveness from people that you have hurt, and you're, and you're also forgiving the people that have hurt you along the way. You know what I'm saying? So I did all that. I worked the 12-step program, and then the 12-step is to start going out and helping other people, you being a sponsor to other people. It's sort of like, you know, the Christian walk when you be, you get discipled and then you become, you, once you got it, then you start going out and fishing for men and start becoming a disciple. I mean, you start, be, you start discipling other people, basically like the same thing. But I was doing that for a while. But the reason why I believe it didn't work, it worked for about 10 months, about 10, 11 months. I was sober and, uh, I, and I, believe it didn't work because it wasn't Jesus. It wasn't that Holy Spirit. It was just a higher power. I would still pray to God. You know, I still always believe God and Jesus. You know, I went to church as a, as a kid. I know about Jesus, but you really didn't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. I really didn't have that encounter with the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of like, it didn't last that long. It faded away. I started drinking again, started going out Next thing you know, I'm just back in my mess, you know, popping pills again. By this time, I'm already 30 years old. It's been going on for 10 years now. I started having more kids. You know, my kids are spread out from different baby mamas living at either their moms or my mom. My mom was taking care of my kids. Uh, they were living with their grandma basically while I was still ran the streets. I was in the club, you know, just being in the club, throwing money in the strip club. And, you know, it started... Uh, when I would go visit them or see them, I seen they weren't babies. You know, when they're babies, I was, you know, able to tell them I'll be back. I'm out working. But when they became five, six, seven, eight, nine, you know, years old, they know what's going on. They know that, you know, you're not working all this time. Like, what's up? Where are you? So I knew I had to make a change for them. And, um, you know, I, I, I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried to do it on my own, but I couldn't. Finally, I just prayed out to God, cried out to God, like, God, you know, you, you know, my heart, you know, I want to change, you know, I want to be there for my kids. Can you please help me come into my life so I can change these, change my ways and be a good father for my kids. That's all I wanted. I just wanted to be able to provide for my kids without living that lifestyle that I was living for, because for my whole adult life, only way I knew how to make money was be out there in the clubs, doing shows and rapping, selling verses and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Either that or sending girls to the strip club and selling pounds of weed here and there. You know what I'm saying? That's all I had been doing. You know what I'm saying? So I was trying to stay away from that lifestyle because I knew I didn't want my kids to grow up around that environment. So I prayed, man. I, I just prayed to God. I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. And 
I believe he made a way. He started working in my life when we started doing the YouTube vlogs. When we started doing the YouTube family vlogs and started showing, I got my kids back living with me. Me and Kelly got together and we started, you know, having a family and started making the YouTube vlogs. God was showing me, look, I can make a way for you to provide for your kids and you be in the house with them. You don't have to be out there on the road doing shows. You ain't got to be in the clubs. You know, I'll still make a way. So I believe he was working on me since back then when we first started doing the YouTube uh, vlogs back in 2017, 2018. Yeah, like four years ago. Not long after that, shout out to Coach C. He reached out to me and said, yo, I want to help you out. Uh, I'm a, a motivational speaker. I'm a, uh, I'm a coach, like a life coach, motivational speaker. I, I help people with their, with their businesses and finance and with their health and their, uh, you know, like, like a, like a trainer, like a personal trainer type dude. So he reached, he's like, yo, this, I want to help you out. I'm a fan of the channel. So he reached out to me and he had me start reading books. He had me start exercising. I started running every morning. I started praying every morning. And then by doing that, now I was denying my flesh by waking up super early in the morning and going directly outside and, and praying before I even started my day. I would pray every morning. Mind you, I'm still not in a church. I'm not going to church. It's just me doing it by myself. I'd wake up in the morning and I'd pray. I'd go outside and I'd run every morning, every morning, every Sunday, seven days a week. You know what I'm saying? I was denying my flesh and God was seeing, okay, okay, I see him. He ain't drinking no more. He ain't smoking no more. He ain't doing drugs. He's being there for his kids. Okay, okay. Now let me meet him halfway. And I believe that's when God met me halfway, when he saw that I was really willing. And when God sees that you're willing, he will come into your life and do something do something new in your life and transform you. But he has to see that you are willing. The Holy Spirit is looking for a vessel to work through. He's looking for a vessel to pour that anointing through. But you have to be willing. You have to be willing to repent of your sins and turn away from your sins and ask God to cleanse you and renew your mind and, and make you brand new and make you new and turn you around and put you out there into the world so they can see, hey, look at this dude, man. I remember him back in the day. Now look at him. Look how he's living now, man. Check him out. He's doing good. So he, he, he put a pastor in my life. Shout out to Pastor Juan. Pastor Juan reached out to me one morning because he had saw one of my morning motivational videos that I was doing when I would be running in the morning. He saw one of those videos I did and he reached out to me and said, yo, I want to, uh, you know, uh, meet up with you. I saw one of your videos. I like what you're doing. So we met up and then he started talking to me about you know, the Bible and started talking to me about Christianity, started talking to me about discipleship. And he said, yo, just give me one year of your life. Let me get one year of discipling you. And, and if your life don't change, go back to how you were, you know what I'm saying? But let me just get one year. And he invited me to his church and we started going to his church on Sunday. We started, you know, we exchanged numbers. We started talking and building that relationship. Then he started walking me through it. And then shortly after that, he introduced me to kingdom music and brian t and i started seeing the christian hip-hop artists and they weren't just rappers they were like real ministers like real ministers of god like they didn't just go to the studio and rap about god but they were really walking with god and ministering to people all day that's like that's really they don't turn it off they don't turn the jesus off like when the camera turned off and the mic turn off they don't turn the jesus off it's still on and that's what I respected about them because I knew it wasn't just about the music. It wasn't just about making money. It was like they were for real about they walk with Christ. And I, was, I had never seen nothing like that. Like I had never seen, you know, I, I've heard of Christian rappers before, but I had never seen people so passionate about it. So, um, yeah, I started rocking with them. They, they, they started pouring into me. I started uh, when I would go run, I started listening to the music man uh young bro uh brian t and young bro's music started ministering to me every morning when i'd go run and then after about a year of that then i started making the music you know what i'm saying i didn't then i put the exodus my first christian mixtape was called exodus that it had already been a year prior to that you know what i'm saying all that had been going on for a year then i put out my first christian mixtape so it ain't like i just all of a sudden said oh i'm gonna start rapping for god now now nah, i was getting discipled i was going to church i was reading my bible i was that's why when you hear my music you can hear the 
the gospel in it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't just rapping by God. You can hear my testimony in my music. You can hear the, the, the real word. I got the word in there. You know what I'm saying? I put scripture in my lyrics. You know what I'm saying? It's because I be in my word. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and I've learned by walking with God that faith and obedience is the key. You know, God wants to bless you. And, and it ain't all about the blessings because there's a season for the blessings. But if your life was just filled with nothing but blessing, 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 we wouldn't need God's forgiveness, his grace, his mercy. You know what I'm saying? So God has a season to reward us. But then there's also a season where we go through the struggle and the pain and, you know, the hardships and the trials and tribulations. And we have to overcome those mountains. But that's when we lean on God and we ask for his forgiveness and his strength and his mercy. And we ask for God's grace and his goodness and his love. And we ask for his forgiveness. We have to break down and repent of our sins in the morning, face first, face down on the floor. You know what I'm saying? I still do that to this day. You know what I'm saying? Nobody, nobody is free from sin. I'm not sitting up here saying that I'm perfect now and I got it all figured out because I don't. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I, I still struggle. But I know with God's grace and with God's strength, I can overcome it all. You know what I'm saying? I don't put things that I used to put before the cross. Now I keep my eyes on the cross, man. I keep my eyes on the shepherd. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you abide in Jesus, if you stay rooted to the vine, you know, you, you won't be sidetracked by the things of this world. You know, the Bible says, seek first, seek him first in his righteousness and he's going to take care of the rest. Matthew 6, 33, you know what I'm saying? Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about tomorrow's worry. Today has its own problems. So all we got to do is stay focused on the cross. And that's my testimony, man. I love y'all. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. In Jesus name.